Contrary to what you might think if you read the comments, I actually didn't hate the first Razer phone. It was a good idea with less than perfect execution. Razer had a silky 120Hz display, but you couldn't see it outdoors. It had a dual camera, but with photo quality that would be embarrassing on a phone at half the price. Plus it was missing table stakes features like water resistance, and it shipped on an old version of Android. There were so many compromises that for me personally, the Razer Phone was a bit of a non-starter. And that's where the Razer Phone 2 aims to improve. Keeping what was great about the original, because for a first effort smartphone they got an awful lot right, while addressing those major pain points I just mentioned. I'm Alex from Android Central, and this is our first look at the Razer Phone 2. If you've followed any of the leaks, you won't be surprised at the basic structure of the second gen Razer phone. From the front and the sides, well, it's a Razer phone. Almost exactly the same size, same 16x9 aspect ratio, same front speaker grille, same metal frame. Around the back is where you'll see the main cosmetic changes, and just about the only way to quickly tell a Razer phone 1 from a Razer phone 2. The rear is now made from Gorilla Glass 5 to accommodate Qi wireless charging, plus one other very cool design feature we'll get to later. This is still a big, beefy gaming phone, but like Razer's gaming laptops, they're designed to be devices that you can use in everyday life too. It's the antidote to gaming phones like the Xiaomi Blackshock or Asus ROG phone that look more like props from a low-budget sci-fi movie than quality consumer electronics. To put it another way, this is a gaming phone for grown-ups. Although the external hardware mostly hasn't changed much, the fundamentals of the Razer phone have received some important upgrades. That buttery smooth QHD 120Hz display is back, and now 50% brighter. It's hard to show this off on video, but side by side you can see a difference in bright daylight between the old screen and the new one. The speakers are just as loud and bassy as before, only now Razer has figured out how to pair them with IP67 water and dust resistance. And there's still no 3.5mm jack, but the bundled headphone dongle now boasts a 32-bit DAC for clearer wired audio when you plug in a headset. Besides the jump up to a Snapdragon 845 platform, the rest of the spec sheet makes for familiar reading. A 4000mAh battery with quick charge 4 plus wired charging, 8GB of RAM and 64GB of storage plus microSD. That's all fine, with the possible exception of the slightly stingy helping of internal storage. Don't get me wrong, I can live with 64 gigs quite happily, but if there's one thing that can make short work of your internal flash, it's high-end games, and that's precisely the focus of this phone. So the experience in gaming, as well as regular smartphone duties, should be familiar, only with a welcome performance bump. And Razer has also upgraded the cooling system with a vapor chamber to help it run at peak performance for longer. Let's zero in on the rear of the Razer Phone 2, because there's a lot of new stuff lurking around the back of this thing. The move to a glass back of course lets Razer stick a Qi charging coil in there, and yes, of course there's also a Razer branded wireless charging stand that'll light up like a Christmas tree when you use it. And the Razer logo around the back of the phone? Yep, that lights up too, using a mobile version of Razer's Chroma software. You can control the colour and pattern of the glow, and use it as a notification LED as well if you like. Like all of Razer's more ostentatious features, you can balance the brightness here to minimise the battery hit of having to light up both sides of your phone at once. The cameras have been a big focus of attention in the Razer Phone 2, and Razer freely admits that when the first phone shipped, its camera was disappointing. So now we've got an upgraded dual camera rig, a 12 megapixel main camera with optical stabilisation, 1.4 micron pixels and an f1.75 lens, plus a 16 megapixel 2x telephoto at f2.6. Paired with improved camera software and the Snapdragon 845's image signal processor, we'll be expecting a significant step up in photo quality in this phone. First impressions are promising, but we'll have to wait until we get our hands on review units before we deliver our verdict. Meanwhile, around the front, Razer was also targeting streamers, with a new front camera capable of shooting 1080p video at 60 frames per second. Now, I've left the software until last because there's not a whole lot to talk about here, especially if you're already familiar with the original Razer Phone's software loadout. The Razer Phone 2 runs Android 8.1 Oreo out of the box, and given the enthusiast focus of this phone, it is disappointing to not see Android 9 Pie loaded on here out of the box. The other major software traits of the Razer Phone haven't gone anywhere. The stock launcher is once again a special version of Nova Launcher optimised for the 120Hz display, and there's still an abundance of theming opportunities in the Razer Theme Store. Gaming performance in my limited time with the Razer Phone 2 seemed speedy, even in demanding titles like Gear Club and PUBG, but we'll need to get our hands on final production hardware before we know for sure how it measures up. 
So that's our first look at the Razer Phone 2, a refinement of the original that doesn't abandon the core idea of a gaming phone that you can also use as a dependable daily driver. But with a price tag of 850 euros, it could have its work cut out to compete against the other big name flagships. That's it for now, stay tuned and subscribe so you don't miss our Razer Phone 2 full review. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.